Hi guys, welcome to a new video format. This is a hybrid between my making of videos and a tutorial. It'll be more in-depth than my making of videos, but not detailed enough to really be considered a tutorial. Today I'm talking about making this velvet bodice for a 16th century kirtle. This is the pattern I'm using. I drafted it myself, but it's based off the pattern for 17th century bodies in Nora Waugh's corsets and crinolines. Unfortunately, the pattern drafting process is not included in this video, I'm just going over the construction. It's a one-piece pattern, but a second pattern piece is used as a guide for marking the boning placement. This pattern will create a garment that cinches in the waist slightly, but its main use is to compress and lift the bust to create a flat front. Pin the pattern onto the folded edge of a lightweight cotton fabric. and cut the pattern out. Pin the boning guide onto the cotton layer fabric. Line it up with the center front and bottom edge of the bodice. Trace around the guide and repeat on the other side. Use a clear ruler and mark a line a quarter inch away from each edge of the bodice. The cotton layer is one of two layers that make up the base of the bodice. To reduce bulk at the edges of the bodice, we'll be removing a quarter inch of seam allowance from each edge. Mark the boning channels onto the fabric. For my kirtle, I've placed a half inch wide metal bone at the center front of the bodice. The rest are quarter inch wide plastic bones. The front section of the bodice that we used a guide to outline will be completely filled with the boning. During this period, lighter weight materials were used for shaping garments, like dried reed, stiff buckram, or even wood. To create support needed, many rows of these materials were placed next to each other. We will be using the same process, but with a more modern and durable material. Make sure to mark the boning placement at the back of the bodice as well, so it won't warp where the eyelets are placed. Now trim the seam allowances off the bodice. Draw a line a quarter inch away from the edge of where the boning is placed. You want the boning to end at this point, not at the very edge of the fabric. Pin the cotton layer onto a heavy non-stretch fabric. This is the base layer of the bodice and will prevent it from stretching. Cotill, denim, twill, and canvas are all good choices for a base layer. Cut the base layer out so it matches the size of the cotton layer. Pin your pattern onto the fabric you are using for the top layer of the kirtle. Then cut the top layer out. Trace the arm openings and neckline onto a lightweight cotton in a similar color. Then mark a line 1.5 inches away from the one you just drew. And cut them out. This is the process of creating facings, which will nicely finish the top edge and prevent it from fraying before we sew the lining in. Use your pattern or the pieces you've already cut as a guide for cutting out the lining. The lining should also be made from a lightweight fabric in a similar color. When everything has been cut out, begin sewing the boning channels. Make sure to stitch straight lines that match the markings you've drawn. If any of them seem too big or too small, rip them out and redo them. 
Also sew around the top edges of the areas that will be boned. This creates a stopper for the boning. Insert the center bone first. This is sometimes called a busk, and for my bodice, this is the only metal bone. For the rest of the boning, I'm using plastic boning. I find this option to be the easiest to work with and the cheapest. Lay the boning against the bodice and mark where the bone should end. Then cut the bone and lightly file any sharp points. And insert it into the bodice. This process gets repeated until all the channels are filled. Sew just above or below where the boning is to create another stopper. You don't want the boning to shift around or move out of place, and this prevents that. To give the bodice a nicer shape, cut out several half circles from quilt batting and layer them. Tuck them between two layers of the bodice. It'll add a bit of volume and lift to the bust. Lay the top layer of material over the base layers. Line them up as best you can, but remember the base layer has been trimmed to be a quarter inch smaller than the velvet layer. Once they're lined up, pin the layers together. Then sew the layers together with a large basting stitch. Turn the lower edge over by a half inch and pin it in place. Then sew the edge down with a whip stitch. Make sure these stitches are securing the edge to the base layer, but not poking through the top layer of material. Pin the facings onto the top edges of the bodice, with the right sides facing each other. Then sew them on by machine with a half inch seam allowance. If you need to, clip the curved edges so the facing turns under smoothly. You don't want any tension to be on the top layer of fabric. Fold the facing to the back side of the fabric so the raw edge is hidden. 
then pin it down. Sew around the faced edges by hand with small running stitches. Once again, the goal is for these stitches to be invisible on the right side of the fabric. Fold the back edge over and pin it down. This edge will have eyelets sewn into it, which is why there's so much excess fabric. Sew this edge down with a whip stitch. Mark the eyelet placement, then use grommet pliers or an awl to create small holes at those points. An awl is better for fine or fray prone fabrics since they stretch the fibers. Grommet pliers punch a hole in the material and cut through the fabric's fibers. Use an eyelet stitch or a whip stitch and sew around the holes you've just created. You want the stitching to be dense around the holes so there's no chance of them fraying or tearing. And with those finished, the bodice is complete. Next time I'll talk about making the sleeves and adding the lining. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.